stories behind how you came to know Christ. Uh, that's why in your personal testimony, just try to make a, a presentation of your life in three minutes. The first minute is, what was your life before you became a Christian? And second minute is, who uh, introduced to you the gospel? How did you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then try to concise that. And then the third is, what happened or what are those blessings that you received after you became a Christian? So therefore, this three-minute presentation is your personal testimony. And try to write it down if you haven't tried to, you know, to make this presentation. And then try to get the important points and make it uh, very short in three-minute time, period of time. And then that's your personal testimony. Every time you meet a certain person, you can just, you know, use your personal testimony. Even you haven't memorized any verses yet since you are a new Christian. However, as you grow in the Lord, there are many uh, uh, verses or techniques or devices or ways that you could present the gospel. Some of you knew about the Roman road of salvation. There's also the bridge illustration. And recently, uh, I have already introduced to you about the application in the smartphone, in iPad, as well as in iPhone and the Android. The application is titled Share Your Faith and Share Your Faith. I used that application and several people have come to know Christ in that application. Mm -hmm. I introduced it lately, in a few uh, uh, weeks ago, to Brother, um, uh, brother uh, Philip. And then he used that tool, that application, last Sunday to a certain young uh, person who wanted to be saved. And she, he used that, you know, uh, uh, application in the iPhone and eventually the lady received Christ as Lord and personal Savior. So that is our goal. So we should at least know each one of us, a member of the body of Christ, of the New Testament Church of Jesus Christ, must know how to win a soul to Christ. You know what the book of Proverbs tells us? He that winneth souls is wise. If you win a soul to the Lord, you are wise in the sight of God. So here, the church at Rome had a vital testimony. It was in a strategic location. And Rome was the center of the civilized world at that time. And the saying was, all roads lead to Rome. All roads lead to Rome. Perhaps you're familiar with that statement. They could meet people from almost any country and the members were not silent with their witness. They shared the gospel with those they met. Because of their willingness to do Christ's work, their ministry was global in scope. And people throughout the world came to know about the Christians in Rome. This was a positive reputation. Paul's ministry had this kind of impact on the cities where he ministered. In Thessalonica, he had the opportunity to share the gospel to a wide range of people. Many began to receive the message and were saved. His opponents bewailed his effectiveness by declaring, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, in Acts 17.6. The testimony was powerful and influenced those who heard. Now, I can just relate to what God has been doing to our church and individually. And before I came here um, to Denmark, uh, I was working in Saudi Arabia. But returning back to what God has been doing to me in the Philippines, uh, God has been training me in many ways in order that I will be prepared for the ministry. I went to the seminary and before I went to Saudi Arabia in 1988. Just learn a little bit because I was working in the hospital while studying in the seminary. But the work demands that make me possible to finish my seminary studies. But in that short period of time while I was in the seminary, I have grasped a lot of things, you know, and knew a lot of things about the Lord and about the theological things that I need to know. 
Eventually, uh, after three uh, years uh, of working as a respiratory therapist, I went to uh, Saudi Arabia to work there. And there, I saw that God was preparing me. I started Bible study, even though it's not allowed there, as you know my story. And uh, I, you know, I keep on sharing the gospel, and many got saved. And after three months, one of the brethren said, he said, I was not ordained yet. He said, Brother Jerry, would you baptize me? I said, baptize? I don't have the authority to baptize you. However, I was going to report this to my dad, who's a missionary in the Philippines. And my dad reported it to Bethel Missionary Baptist Church in uh, Tatum, Texas, where the pastor there and the church gave me the authority later to, so that I could perform baptism. And then, well, uh, there were several baptisms that followed. Many souls have been saved. But uh, my time there, as I saw it, it's only for three years. And that was the preparation that God has made upon me. So I will start to work in, in Denmark. But as I look upon it, the thing that I have done by the grace of the Lord, many souls have been saved. And to my surprise, these people were you know, were distributed in other parts of the world and even become pastors and ministers. Uh, one is in Brunei. I met him after 24 years last April and he's now ministering in Brunei. And then another one who was uh, at that time when I discipled him in Saudi Arabia, uh, I saw him that he has an eagerness to learn more about God. He was so excited to, to be discipled and later on, he contacted me recently. He's now in Valencia, Manila, and also a pastor there of about his church. Mm -hmm. And then, while here in Copenhagen, Denmark, one of those who got saved here and become a member of the Lord's Church was Brother Louis Gala. And then uh, I discipled him, thinking that uh, he will assist me in the work. But the Lord, you know, brought, uh, sent him to uh, Auckland, New Zealand. <laughs> And then he asked me that I will go there to be a missionary. I said, uh, if the Lord wills, but perhaps it's God who is, you know, going to place you there and become a missionary there and a pastor. Eventually, he become one, and he's now the pastor of uh, North Shore Bethel Missionary Baptist Church in Auckland, New Zealand. And I, as I look at it, I said, wow, God is, you know, is... Um, uh, working in different aspects through your life, through you know our life, and through the church. And even when we have our church here, I could remember again that uh, some of our members, like Sister Lolita, got saved and she started to minister in her place in uh, Lumbang Mission that is in Cebu. And eventually there's a chapel, there's a church there building, and God has provided a missionary that is working there. And the many souls have been saved and some baptisms recently. And also in Buhi, that is in Camarinisu, that is in the part of Luzon, we have also the family here of Sister uh, Evelyn. And uh, uh, she got saved here, uh, reached out her family in uh, her hometown, and eventually started a work there. And there's a church, a nice church. Uh, you have seen it last Sunday. There's, uh, they have renovated the building. It's so solid, you know, uh, it's so firm because it's all made of cement and uh, glory to God, you know. Amen. Through that mission there in Buhi, it has also multiplied to many areas on that part of the, yeah. you know, town. And, and not only that, uh, one of the mission had their radio station. And our missionary there just preached regularly about three times a week. And many got saved on the surrounding um Places who are living in the mountains because they just have the medium of listening to the radio. They don't have the television yet in some remote areas. And even there's a seminary of a seminary of a certain religion there who got saved and went out from the seminary and now it's become a preacher. And that's the fruit there. And several of the students also in that seminar came out because they are you know teaching their own doctrines. And now they become a part of the mission there in the surrounding area. Yeah. So as I look at it, I said, Lord, wow, in this, uh, the years that has been through, yeah. you are using us, using the church, yeah. uh, using each one as we're going to follow him. 
and uh, guide us whatever we're going to do. And here in Barcelona, also here in uh, in uh, in Denmark, we have the work going on in, in Malmo, and now we have in Barcelona. And it's so exciting, you know, to see how the Lord is, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, extending His kingdom through those members who have the desire to uh, uh, preach the gospel and to share the gospel to other people. This is what happened also to the book of or to the Roman Christians. Let's look in again in the verse here in Romans chapter 1 verse 8. This is what it says. Romans verse 8, 1 verse 8. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of what? Throughout the whole world. Throughout the whole world. So you can see here, your faith has spoken throughout the whole world. So God is using churches who are faithful to Him so that the gospel will be preached throughout the whole world. And little by little, God is accomplishing that as we will be faithfully you know, obey His commands and continue to pray that there will be more laborers. Yeah. For the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Well, I'll stay there in Barcelona for a month. I, my heart is aching because many people really need the Lord. And I saw that that city is like the city that never sleeps. You know, because even in, in the early in the morning, there's a lot of people walking, you know, as if there's no night there. And also those people, when we were holding our services, there was a one week there that they always, you know, they just uh, uh, make uh, noise in the streets. They were drinking and dancing all night long. And I say, and as I look upon them, these people really need Christ. They are really lost. They are really, really lost. They enjoy what they are doing, but that's only temporary. You know, they need the Lord. So we need to, um, to uh, be faithful in propagating his word and in, in uh, as God will re reveal unto us one at a time we must follow his direction so what kind of impact do churches have in the world today sometimes people are so concerned about being accepted that they will water down the message of repentance and faith unfortunately some churches are doing that they water down the gospel in order to win people, they are using the worldly tactics, worldly ways to, you know, to invite people to join their church. And what would happen? They will become a worldly church. A church that not really represents what Christ wants. They are worried about offending someone. While it is important to always present the gospel in love, people must realize their need. We cannot be judgmental and condemning we must be loving caring and compassionate what people need is not another person telling them to change their lifestyle you cannot change by saying those people change your lifestyle but what we're going to say is that what they need is jesus and eternal life and when the message of the gospel is presented from a heart of love note this from a heart of love not a heart of prejudice or hatred then people might begin to listen so they might actually be saved then our testimony might begin to have an impact on the world so many scriptures tie saints to the second coming of christ the old testament prophet Zechariah describes a day of turmoil coming on the earth the lord will return to the earth to establish his kingdom, it will be a time of earthquakes and other upheavals. In that day, the Lord will come and all the saints with thee, in Zechariah 14.5. And that day was also described by Jude when he said, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all, Jude 14 and 15. As the time of the tribulation period draws to a conclusion, the Lord will enter the atmosphere to set His feet on the Mount of Olives. He will not come alone. 
Those called out in the rapture will come with him. And the myriads of saints from all ages will join the Lord as he rides his white horse to the earth. That will be a glorious day. But the saints have their part in the festivities of that day. Who are the saints? They are the ones who are beloved of God, called to be saints. Now are you of that number? We're looking forward for this event. The second coming of Christ. Wherein we are going to uh, enjoy the first thing that would happen after the rapture. Uh, there will be the rewarding uh, of those who are faithful to God. Remember, there are five types of rewards a Christian would receive. Uh, first, the reward is the crown of rejoicing. The question is, how many people have you won to the Lord? You're going to receive the crown of rejoicing. The second is the incorruptible crown. The crown that uh, uh, plays to those people who are faithful to the Lord. And there is also what we call the crown of righteousness. We are living in the days where there are many compromises. How are you living in the sight of God? Are you living in purity and in holiness? Then God will crown you with the crown of righteousness. We have also the crown of the crown of life. The crown of life are those people or those Christians who are able to overcome their trials and testings in life. And then even during their some temptations, they were able to, you know, to, to yield to God. And you won the uh, glorious victory and you will receive the crown of life. And the final crown is the crown of glory. Uh, this pertains to the pastors or perhaps the spiritual leaders. However, not all pastors will receive that because only the faithful pastors will receive the crown of glory. Why? Because there are some pastors who, you know, who uh, backslid or do not continue to for the work of God. They lost their crowns. They, if they are really truly saved, they are saved, but they lost their crowns. Now, the question here is that as saints of God, we are challenged to be faithful to Him even to the end of time. We must be faithful in following the marching orders of the Lord to go into all the world and preach the gospel and baptize those who are saved and then teach them all things whatsoever the Lord has commanded us. Well, let us pray and continue to ask the Lord for His guidance and for boldness that we could declare the good news of salvation to those people who need the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the lesson that we have learned, how special it is, O oh God, being a born-again Christian, that we are the beloved of God, and we are called to be saints. It is, Lord, a responsibility for us, not only to know our position, but to also um, do the things that you have called us to do. And today, we, tonight also, Lord, we thank you for knowing that all the efforts that we have done are worthwhile because when you return back, you are bringing the rewards to those who are faithfully serving you. And we're looking forward, oh God, for your second coming. However, at this point of time, people still need the Lord. Many people are still lost in their sins. And Lord, you know, we know that uh, you are using your church and us individually as a member of the church family to follow the marching orders that you have set many years ago and your promise that you will be with your church even to the end of yes, the age. Amen. And we praise you, O oh God, because one day we will be together with you forever and ever. And we ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.